Welcome to Momentum Magnet, a podcast to inspire your growth. I'm Karen Morales, and your host in helping you find ways to make positive changes for your business, health, relationships, and life. We always have a path to a happier ending, so let's get started today. Hello, and welcome to this edition of Momentum Magnet. Today, we're talking about a topic that I think is in the forefront of all of our minds as we're edging closer to September, and it's really about how outsourcing can save your sanity. This has been a huge topic in my business this week. I hired a new assistant, we onboarded, and I already feel like 16 tons of excess stress have evaporated almost overnight. But it made me really ask the question of how can more people take advantage of doing less? And I think one of the reasons this idea of outsourcing popped into my mind so dramatically this week was all of the discussion about the school schedule in September. And for me, one of the things that came up that is a business role I talk to all of my entrepreneurs about, it is to get farther faster, you need to do less. Now, as we see with the school districts, they're still spinning around their wheels, wondering what their schedule will be, planning multiple variations of options versus focusing on one and making it great. So with that mindset and this idea that we can always do better by focusing our attention on the things that really matter, I decided to bring in an expert, someone that's worked more than 15 years in helping the busiest of the busy, healthcare practices, be more efficient with their time. Sarah, to gender, um, grew up in the hospital uh, with a dad who was a doctor. And in the 15 years that she's been working as an efficiency expert for medical care practices, practices, she's helped more than 15,000 people around the world improve their operations. She lives with her family and her children in outside of Boston. She also follows a plant-based lifestyle, and I'm so happy to have her today. Hi, Sarah. Hey, Karen. Thank you so much for having me today on this radio show, this podcast. So fun. It is going to be so fun. And for anybody listening online, you know you can always call in to ask questions. The number is 844-305-7800 if you'd like to chat live with Sarah and ask for her advice on any outsourcing or efficiency question. So for today, we're going to start on the business side of things. So I think it would be really wonderful for you to give us a sense of how do you walk into something as busy and especially right now as a, as a medical practice and give them greater peace of mind? Tell me how you do your work. <laughs> how do I do that? Goodness. You know, it's uh, really interesting because don't you wish, Karen, that people would just sit and watch you work for a day and say, Karen, why are you doing that? What the heck are you doing? Because I wish someone would follow me around and just help me realize the things that are not within my zone of genius. So, I mean, that's one of the things. I don't think it's necessarily about scheduling, although our brains really like to stay safe, right? So we're feeling very unsafe right now. We're feeling very disjointed, not knowing what 2020, the rest of 2020, the upcoming 2021 is going to look like. That's making us all very frantic. But the other thing is a lot of people are also feeling unfulfilled because they're doing the things that aren't within their zone of genius, and if someone would just watch us and someone would just observe and say, there's a better way to do this, there's a better way to build this mousetrap. And that's what I've done for years in working alongside my dad. I know all the different things that you can do as a medical provider. And then I know those things that only you can do as a medical provider. And then all the things that someone else can do to help make your life a little bit easier. And I mean, especially when I think about my healthcare for myself and my family, and I walk in to a very vulnerable situation with someone who you know, sometimes has life and death within their hands right there, I want them to only be focused on the thing that they're good at and nothing else. I don't want them to be stressed about, 
well, what's my family at home going to have for dinner? Do I have enough clean underwear in my underwear drawer? Is my office running right now? And are the you know, collectibles being collected? Was the trash going to get taken out? All those little things that just run through our heads. Let's get that out. Let's get the clutter out of your heads. And uh, so that's one thing that I do, Karen, is I, you know, with my, the people that I work with, you know, with my clients, I will actually set up a time to observe them. But the first thing to do, and I, I bet you did this, Karen, when you went ahead and hired your assistant. And if you're getting started, this is what I suggest is go, go to Google, go print out a calendar, one of those calendars that is a daily calendar that has every hour with a different time spot. And I want you to audit a couple of your days. I want you to go and I want you to write down what time did you wake up? And I want you to audit maybe a couple weekdays and a, uh, maybe a weekend and, you know, a day that's a busier day and a day that's a slower day for you. So a couple of different days, you know, what time did you wake up? What did you do in the morning? And, and go back every couple hours, set an alert on your phone. You don't have to do this, you know, long term. It doesn't have to be two weeks of journaling, just a couple of days so we can see where you're spending your time and then circle those tasks that someone else could do and start writing them down and recording how you do them. I mean, I love this, but is anybody else terrified at someone following you around to see if you're efficient? <laughs> I mean, you had me laughing inside and somewhat screaming with the idea of how much time I probably do waste. Mm -hmm. They could be, you know, left to better devices, but that's interesting. So when you're walking into these medical practices, or in this case, virtually visiting these medical practices, how have you seen our current state of affairs really change the already kind of stressed out environment of medical practices. Yeah, the ones that are thriving are the ones that are having systems in place. Mm -hmm. They're having checklists and they're having um, a couple things. There's two things that I really believe in when it comes to medicine and it comes to efficiency and also safety, because this is what we're concerned about. We're always concerned about that. So it doesn't even make a difference that we're in a a different safety time and safety means something different for us today. Safety's always meant, you know, the same thing in medicine. And so we're, we're going to first just think about systems. And um, the one thing that I like to say is if you have everything systemized and you have the whole process written down and the order that you're supposed to do things, but then the other thing to make sure that we can keep it safe is to have a flattened hierarchy. So we have everyone that's responsible for that system and everyone within the system feeling comfortable that they can speak out when the system's not working well. So it doesn't matter, Karen, that you're the boss and you have an assistant. Once we teach the assistant the system, we want to give her the autonomy to be able to say, hey, Karen, we're not following protocol. <laughs> you know, we did things out of order. And it, just to be able to call it out. Now, and it's actually brilliant. I want to stop you there because okay. I've worked 20 years in large corporations, multinationals. I would say that is the most simplistic description of one of the reasons most large organizations do not have full force productivity. And it's that the chain of command is not empowered to make decisions and reinforce prioritization. And that idea of flattening the hierarchy so that the entire team is keeping everyone responsible for what's important would transform literally everything. I, I make so many awkward sports analogies and they're awkward okay. because I don't, didn't play a whole lot of sports growing up, but I know in football, which is something yeah. I know nothing about is, um, you know, the, the whole thing is you can't drop the ball. Right. And so it's not like this football can come hurling at you and you can just be like, well, it's that guy's responsibility to go get the ball. I mean, it's got to be like, you, you can't let the ball touch the ground. Like you just can't do that in football. And if you think about that with, with every single task that your organization does, that you can't let the ball touch the ground and everyone needs to protect that ball, you're not going to have as many balls. You won't, you won't drop balls. And when everyone feels as if they can speak up because of that common goal and no one's admonished and everyone has a voice, they say in operating rooms, when they have the safest situation in an operating room is when everyone starts the surgery by everyone going around and saying something. 
Because once you've spoken a word into a room, it opens up the ability for you to feel like you can speak another word into that room. But if you've walked into that room and you've stayed silent up until the point when you think you might want to say something, but you haven't said anything yet, you're less likely to say something. So starting off with everyone having a voice is really important. Wow, that's amazing. Because I'm thinking about how many large meetings I've been in where you know two thirds of the room has been silent. Yeah. And that is a very interesting idea to sort of build a better atmosphere of connectivity by opening every meeting with the ability to everybody to have a a chance to say something. Hmm. That's interesting. That's really, so if you're going into a business, this is, and I think we want to do parallels for things that work with any business medical or not. The three things that you say make or break efficiency are what? Oh, the three things that are going to make or break efficiency in any business. One is, is knowing who owns what, Who's responsible for what? Um, And even if you own it, but it doesn't mean that you're the one that completes it, but you have to be the one that completes it. That's really, really important. Um, So if I say to you, Karen, that I'm responsible for sales, it means that anything that comes under sales comes under me. I, you know, I'm going to do whatever it takes so sales gets done. And we're going to define that even further. So does that mean that social media falls under sales? Mm-hmm. Or do we have our own marketing department? Or am I wearing both the sales and the marketing hat? And I think that's uh, that's an important thing is, um, you know, our our customer service, who owns customer service, who owns, you know, the financials, who's responsible for that, and there's a lot, like a lot of little tasks. There's a lot of administrative tasks. So you just have to take all the tasks and then figure out who owns what. So I, I don't. I see that doesn't happen. I'm going to go back to that word zone of genius. I find a lot of people are not working within their zone of genius. Mm-hmm. So I I see this. You know, small businesses. They'll start up a small business. They'll hire someone new. Maybe it's a younger person because we're bootstrapping on a budget, right? So we're going to hire someone right out of school um, because that means that we're not going to have to pay as much for them. So we figure, well, this young person out of school, I hired them for a specific job that's you know, not quite up and running yet. And so they might not have 40 hours to fill. So I'm just going to dump social media on their plate because they're a 20 something year old. So they must know how to do social media for a business. And now you've just given someone something that's not within their zone of genius. And I find that that really ends up breaking a business when you don't realize what people are good at. Um, And then the third thing is that I find that people manage by emotions and not by metrics. So what I mean by this, Karen, is let's say social media was within your zone of genius. You know, so how are we judging if we're good or not at social media? You know, so someone's running the social media for you, let's say, and you go to your Facebook page and you're like, God, that was a really cute Instagram story that they put, they posted the other day. I'm feeling really good about my brand because I just thought that Instagram story was so great. But are we not, are we tracking the engagements within the Instagram story? Are we tracking, are we tracking Instagram growth? Are we tracking conversions of discovery calls booked from your Instagram page? And what is the metric that you're actually tracking by? Let's not measure someone's performance by emotions and just how you feel. Let's actually get some metrics around that. So we know how your team members are actually performing. And I think you can do this for every single person on your team. Everything from you know, the person that cleans your home and your office all the way to you know those C-level sales executives on your team as well. That is really true. And the, the interesting part about that is those three philosophies really translate to your personal life as well. It always does. It, it always, always does. does. <laughs> And I don't know about you, Karen, but I specialize in working with the female mom health practitioner. And so, you know, I, and I, so when I think about that a lot, you know, I, I can see a lot of things that she's doing in her practice that I'm guessing happen at home as well. <laughs> because when we tend to be a boss babe, you know, we're not just a boss babe in the office, we're probably also a boss babe at home. Okay. So enlighten us. I have a feeling these are going to ring true. What are some of those things she's doing at work? 
and at home. Yeah. And I usually actually, Karen, when I work with my clients, we start at home because I'm saying, what do we do? We've got to free up time for right. you. We have got to free up space. So I'm going to give you a huge side effect to working with me. Again, you know, I, I have this medical background, so I feel like I should give you that pharmaceutical disclaimer, except this isn't possibly going to cause, you know, blindness and paralysis and even death. That's not what it is. There's one thing that it is going to cause, and that's a lot of holes in your calendar, a lot of holes in your schedule. And uh, Karen, you've got to agree with me, especially as a mom, like you need to have a clear head. You need to have that creative genius that's flowing for you. You need to have that space and time that you can throw things on there when the kids just need an extra cuddle or, you know, you you realize that you forgot that you volunteered to bake two dozen cupcakes for your daughter's soccer and a year party, whatever it was. Uh, you know, you need those kind of catch all times. And you also just need that to clear your head because you're going to be more productive. So that's the side effect is you're going to have more time. Um, and another thing I, I always say when I, when I speak to my clients who are moms, that our kids are never going to remember at the end of the day, who matched their socks. That's not the memories that you're going to leave. They're not going to say, gosh, my mom, she was the best because I always had socks that were matched and organized and file folded within my drawers. Yeah. You know, you don't have Worry to be that. Some that mom did, children uh, do not care. I, I agree me. with you. I do the I same thing. You. I have a house manager in my life and about six months into my business, I realized the only way for me be, to be able to scale was to take out grocery shopping, errands, laundry, wrapping birthday presents, and these basic tasks that just took a lot of time. It was something that I started at about five hours a week and I added to in time. And it is also one of my number one suggestions to any of my friends or my clients. Take some of that added stress off your plate. And especially now, I think as we are needing to be in our homes more. I think it is a little more challenging in this moment when maybe you can't have people back and forth, but enabling some of those really rote activities that really, to your point, do not make a difference in who does it will be life-changing. It has certainly been life-changing for me. I agree with you. And there's a couple of things, because if we don't want to talk about a, a couple hundred dollars a month, if that sounds too scary for you as an investment at the beginning, you, let's do something simple. Like I know we all want to eat healthier, right? And so let's, as we're going down the aisles of Whole Foods, let's invest in the cut up butternut squash as opposed to the you know pre-done butternut squash. I, un, I the, the full butternut squash. I understand that you can buy butternut squash for like eighty nine cents a pound, and all of a sudden the cut up butternut squash is five times the price per pound. I'm telling you, those couple dollars are not worth it for the 20 plus minutes it takes to cut up a butternut squash. Like it, you'll find those things that are going to be small little hacks and, and it might sound, and, and this is, it, it's a whole psychology thing. And if this is what's holding you back, we have to have a further conversation about your money mindset. If you're that type of person that can't pay the three extra dollars for the cut up butternut squash. And nothing has to be permanent. So if you know that you're going into a launch or you're going into a time, like when I work with health providers where maybe we're onboarding someone new in the practice and we know something's going to take up a little bit more time. And you know, at home, we're like, well, you know, if I could just free up three more hours and that might mean for the next three weeks you send out your laundry. It doesn't mean you are a princess in an ivory tower and you've never done, you never do your laundry ever again. Like we don't have to go to Beyonce level, although I want you to, but we don't have to go there. We can just start with a temporary solution. So Karen, I think that's yeah. funny because I, I think I have a natural, I have a natural predisposition, a wiring for fun and enjoyment. So I started this outsourcing journey when I had no money. When I was in college, I would have to wait in line in the dorms for the laundry machines. I did it literally twice. And I said, no more. I am not sitting in this boring, awful room. I'm not having somebody take my wet clothes out of the dryer and have none available. I never will I ever do this again. 
So I started using the majority of my like weekly allowance and earnings on sending out my laundry. And I felt zero guilt and I felt a thousand times better. I picked up an extra few hours in my, in my job at school and I never looked back. So I agree with you. I think one of the challenges, and you see this in the home setting where people don't want to invest in making their life easier. And you see this in the business setting when people don't want to set prices that equate to the value of their time when they're undercharging and undervaluing the benefits that they actually deliver. I think if you're listening to this conversation on outsourcing and you're having that really kind of nervous reaction that this isn't for me, this is only for people that are super privileged, you should spend some time thinking about, is my mindset the block? Why does that feel so icky to me? Because I think we could all agree that making life easier should be for all of us. Let me give you another business example that I see all the time. People get a little leery of new technology. So, mm. I, you know, I talked to someone the other day and I said, tell me a little bit about how you're email marketing. And they were like, well, I got to say, Sarah, I'm not really email marketing because I don't really know how to do that. And I'm like, listen, listen, girlfriend, like for probably $50, we can go find someone on the internet who can set you up with an email system and we can get all your email contacts organized and then they can sit down and they can shoot you a little video and teach you how to do it. Like you do not need to sit and go through YouTube channels and do, just pay someone to set you up. You know, we do not need to be an expert in this. And again, if we're managing by metrics, like I can tell you that if I had an electrical issue in my home, I do not know how electricity works. I actually do not understand that. But if I'm managing by metrics, I'm knowing if the lights are going on or they're not going on. So I'm knowing if my electrician is doing the work or not doing the work. And, you know, and then we have a flattened hierarchy. Go ahead, go show me what you did, you know, and we're going to walk over to the electrical box. I might not really understand what he's talking about, but I'm going to go and see it. And we're, we're going to be involved in this conversation. And I am not going to spend my whole day trying to YouTube how to do that. And I, I'm making like a ridiculous analogy because we would never even think of doing our own electrical work if that wasn't in our zone of genius. But somehow we think we should do our own email marketing system, or we should do our own social media, or we should do our own sales funnel. No, no, we shouldn't, because that's probably not what your, your zone of genius is. So what is the side effect? What is the blessed side effect when people actually start doing less? What do you most often see in the transformation of your clients? Yeah, they make more. That's the crazy part. It's so, I mean, you're, yeah, you're not in your head. You get it. Yeah, get, you make more. Um, when you have more time, you can be more creative. You can show up in a more powerful way and do what only you can do. That's what happens. Uh, I would say in the last three years, I've taken a lot of trips. It was a focus of mine when I started my business and I wanted to have more time with my children, more time on the road. And I would say there has not been a trip that I have gone on in the last three years where I have not closed a piece of business or gotten an alert that a piece of business that I was waiting to hear on had come in. I make money every time I travel, period. It's almost like the more joy and the more relaxation I put in my life, it feels as if it's delivered back to me twofold. We're the same way. Every time we go on vacation, we, my husband and I, we always say we do more business and with less work. And it is so fun. Absolutely so fun. So when you can do this and it gets addicting, you know, once you get on a roll. So a couple of things with outsourcing is it doesn't have to be permanent. So you can, like I said, you just do something temporarily, just get started. It's a, you know, just try it once and uh, that's it, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be like we're adopting someone as a family member if we're sending our laundry out or we're hiring someone to set up our social media campaigns. I have some, I know we talked about Karen the other day, some people that I have on my team. There's some people I've had on my team for years. And there's sometimes I bring someone in just for a, a small project. 
just for, I mean, we're interacting for a day, maybe even a couple hours. I wanted to surprise a client with uh, a graphic. I wanted to make her a custom graphic for her website. And it cost me, Karen, $7 to send her this custom graphic. It was done in just a few hours. And it was in time for a meeting that I had with her. And she was so absolutely thrilled. She was like, oh, please let me pay you for it. I was like, listen, if if we were together in person, I would have bought you lunch. This is less than buying you lunch. I'm happy to you know, send you this custom graphic. Made me look good. She was thrilled. It was fun. It was a, a gift. And that's an outsourcing thing. I probably could have done it myself. I'm, I'm pretty tech savvy and I have a little bit of graphic design background, but why would I when I can have someone else do it for way less money than my time is worth? That's wonderful. So if you are listening and you have a question for Sarah, go ahead and call us at 844-305-7800. All right. So in our homes about outsourcing, Where's the first place you start? Is it really the pre-cut vegetables is, or is it cleaning or help with childcare? Where do you usually like to focus when you're talking at the at-home job description? Yeah, that we're going to have to have two things happen. One, it's going to have to first be that audit because mm-hmm. everyone's goals are different and not everyone eats as much cut up vegetables as maybe I do with my plant-based diet. <laughs> you know, that's important to me. Um, and Everyone has different needs. There's people that don't have kids, so they don't need the child care situation. Or people that that's their goal. They don't want to outsource their child care necessarily because that's what they want to do. You know, Karen, you and I, we like to spend time with our kids. Listen, we also like to spend time away from our kids. But, um, you know, it, it, that might not be of the utmost priority. So it's really seeing what is that thing that when you go and you want to stay safe and you want to stay busy and you want to stay unproductive, what are you going towards? What are you doing? Uh, And it can be, maybe you have someone that cleans your home, but you're the one that every spring is putting back in all of your screens. You don't have someone who does that for you right now. So maybe it's finding someone putting in screens would be fun for someone. (laughs) I'm I'm laughing to myself right now saying under no circumstances ever do I want to put in a screen. (laughs) But that's like something that keeps people people busy. They stay really busy with that. They stay really busy with putting out the lawn furniture or putting it away or doing an organizational project or, I mean, I I just talked to one of my clients um, this morning and they're spending their weekend landscaping, but they said, we really enjoy doing landscaping and we find it's a way we can hang out together as a couple, this husband and wife. And so I would never tell them to go ahead and outsource their landscaping. Now, I might tell them it might be a good investment to get an irrigation system to keep their landscaping intact because I know that in their schedule, they don't have time to manually go out and water their lawn every single day like it should be done. So you know, outsourcing can look like an irrigation system. Outsourcing could look like a house cleaner. Outsourcing could look like a laundry service, or even for me, I get a box of organic vegetables delivered to my door every Friday, local organic vegetables. Now, I I used to love, and I still do, I love going to a farmer's market and going around and picking up local organic fruit and vegetables, but now I do it when it's a pleasure, not when it's a necessity. So if I find myself out and about and I'm with my kids and I want to go peruse through you know, an organic farmer's market, I can do that with ease. I, and Karen, I haven't in years gone to the grocery store because I had to. Like I now just go to the grocery store when I, you know, there's an item or I just, you know, feel like, like tomorrow I'm going to picnic with my family. And I said, I think it'd be fun to go up and down the aisles of Trader Joe's, right? That's always fun to do every now and then and buy some of my favorite things. But week in and week out, like you, I'm, I'm not spending my time at the grocery store. No. I mean, the, the invention of app-based grocery shopping really changed my life. Traveling and, well, when, we used to, when I used to travel more often on a plane for work, and I know you speaking on stages across the country and worlds, it was a great thing to do at the airport home. I would make sure that I was ordering groceries to come home to or to be there the next morning. So I never had 
that stress after coming back from a long business trip of what are we going to eat? What are we going to do? And that was always a beautiful moment and a much easier way to make your load lighter. And then next level, Karen, for you is you can have your house manager do that for you. I mean, we eat the same things week in and week out. And my kids are probably just as picky as everyone else's kids. And they eat the same five things, right? That you have to always have in the house um, at six, three, and just under one years old. Like we're buying the same foods day, week in and week out and making the same things. And so someone else can go and open up my pantry and open up my fridge and say, you know, are we running out of black beans? Do we have enough bananas? I mean, it's not, something that I'm the only one that can do that. And no, so that's a hack that, that I found a lot with our, with our um, house manager, because my children are older, they're, you know, in school age. So she doesn't need to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one watching of the kids. They play outside with friends, they bike, they do those types of items. So she cuts all the vegetables mm. into the shapes and sizes and peeled and non-peeled versions that the folks require <laughs> to keep their culinary preferences happy. <laughs> but it's going to save you money because it's less money on takeout. It's going to save you time because you're not doing it. It's going to save you time where you're not taking your kids to the doctors because they're keeping their immune systems healthy with really great food and they have no excuse. And it just makes so much sense to be able to do that. So I am all for you doing that. And uh, I would like to encourage you, Karen, we'll, we'll check back in in a couple of weeks to see if we can get your house manager to also place the online grocery delivery orders. I like that. I will think about that. So Sarah, here's the, the tough question of the moment. How can people think about outsourcing in the fall if we're back to a situation where that sort of in-person help is not available due to distancing practices? So what is your best advice for your families facing that challenge? Yeah, yeah. Um, things are definitely going to change for sure. And so let's think about those things that are contactless. You know, let's think about the, and I, I mean, someone remote can also place my same grocery order for me every single week. Uh, we now have laundry delivery systems where you can put all your laundry in a bag and they will return it to you in a folded bag. So sure, you're going to have to put it in drawers, but no one's coming to your house. So no one's going to see if it's in drawers or it's not in drawers. That's not going to drive you crazy. Uh, you know, and giving yourself just a little bit of grace as well to like let the things go that aren't important. And let's focus on the most important things. Um, I think rules and boundaries and priorities, and this might be the time that you learn how to get into a system where someone else is checking your emails for you. So you're not all day working from home remote in front of a computer, you know, just refreshing your inbox and responding. And you're really working like the true entrepreneur that you are from a visionary perspective. And so, you know, let's, let's give someone else your email box and make it so they send you just the links of what's important that you need to respond to at 4 p.m. every single day. You know, that we can get really creative with ways so you're just working on the things that you're the only one that you can do. Do you outsource your email inbox? That's interesting because my new assistant suggested that to me yesterday and it gave me hives. Yeah. I never had anyone do that and I was stressed thinking about it. I have before. Yeah. Right now I'm not because I'm not, I'm ha I have a good system in place and priorities and boundaries and out of office replies and if this, then that type things. But um, there are times when it, because again, I have a launch or a promotion, or I just find that that's the thing that's bogging me down. I get in a bad habit for it. So I will outsource it. I've done it te for temporary situations when I need to have laser focus on something else. That's beautiful. And maybe that is the way to walk into all of these new routines. As you were saying that, I was beginning to feel like maybe this is something I should consider in the future. And I'm thinking about a three-day period later in August where I need to be unavailable. So I'm like, that would be the perfect test kind of bed to give someone else access to my email and see how it goes in a way that feels much less stressful and like a huge systemic change that maybe I'm not ready for right now. Because maybe they send you 
at 4 p.m. every day a Voxer message, which mm -hmm. is just a, an app where you can leave a voice memo. And they send you a really easy Voxer message with, you know, these emails, you know, obviously you had the ones from the Gap and Lululemon and Whole Foods. And, but, you know, these emails came through that looked like they were a little bit more important. And I just want to give you a rundown. What do you want to do with these? And then at that time, you can go into your email if you feel like you need to. But if, if you don't, you could either give them a reply back or, you know, just say that's not important. Just let them know. I'll get back to them on Monday. Yeah, that is a great idea. So if a business comes to you and says, Sarah, I want to grow as fast as possible and get the most momentum in the next 12 months. How do you have that conversation and help them get to a plan? Yeah, I need them to start writing down what they're doing and documenting it starting right now. And so Karen, I bet, I mean, I, I bet you did this because you said that onboarding an assistant was really easy for you. And I just worked with someone recently who just onboarded someone new in their business. And because she didn't have all the tasks written down ahead of time, she was teaching someone and she had to be there for one-on-one -on -one assistance for the first two, three weeks to train them. And so what what I suggest is if you don't have this in place to have your current team write down what they're doing. And so we can create systems from that. And so they can kind of create their own manuals for what they do for if we need to hire someone else to replace them. So you don't need to be down or shut down for any reason. You, know, you, you should have all of that in place with videos and screenshots and recordings and mind maps and task lists. And this is something you can outsource that's really great. And then again, auditing your time, finding out what's within your zone of genius and finding people to take things off of your plate. So you have as much free space. It's going to sound crazy. I'm not going to tell you to hustle for the next 12 weeks. I'm not going to tell you to double down over, not 12 weeks, 12 months. I'm not going to tell you to double down. I'm not going to tell you that you have to take this year and work till your eyeballs bleed. I don't believe in that. I believe in the opposite. How can we make sure that you have more self-care scheduled? How can we prioritize you? How can we prioritize you so you have all of your energy on that thing that makes you so uniquely you. Well, that is the perfect ending. I think all of us can take some time today to really think about how we can create a little more space in our lives. It's August. It's usually the national month of vacation. And maybe if you're not going anywhere, it's time to take a vacation from your day-to-day -day routines and just think about how you can have a little more flow a little more balance and a little less hustle in your day to day. So Sarah, I really thank you for coming on today. I'm so appreciative for all your advice and I look forward to following you. If people want to hire you to come into their lives or businesses, how would they do that? Well, let's hang out first. Let's uh, take a call and and see if you know it makes sense for us to move forward. And it's really simple to do that. I'm easy to get in touch with anywhere, all over social media. Um, but if you just want to go to my website, www. Sarah with an H S A R A H two gender T U G E N D E R dot com. Very simple. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for your time today. And I hope you have a fantastic weekend with your cut up butternut squash. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Karen. You too. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Momentum Magnet. We're here every Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern time to share inspiring comeback stories. We want to hear your reviews and love getting your subscriptions on iTunes and Spotify. For show notes and past episodes, visit MomentumMagnet.com. I'm Karen Morales, keynote speaker, writer, and founder and CEO of Marketing Magnet, a fast-growing marketing agency for purpose-driven companies. Whether you are a business needing an agency or if you are looking for weekly tips to get ahead, sign up at marketing-magnet.com to receive our weekly inspiration on getting more in your life and business.